All right, folks, we are in game number two. Looking really good in TVZ. Better than he has been in TVT, at least. He's up 1-0. He's already knocked down Horror. He's about to take Armani out as well. In the bottom left, the Red Terran player, Dead Pixels Fantasy. In the top left, as the Orange Zerg, it's Samsung Galaxy's Armani. By the way, to be a little bit cryptic for a moment, did you get to speak with that Twitch admin about what we had discussed? I did, yeah. Uh, he didn't know. Okay. <laughs> he heard me someone else. Well, I was wondering, did you want to kind of... Uh, I don't want to do it for you if you don't want to. Do you want to talk about what you're doing on Tuesday? Because I think it'd be kind of cool to let people um, know. I think I can talk about it in general, but I can't promise what we were talking about. This is so cryptic. Anyways. Okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, guys, Tuesday, tomorrow, I'm planning on doing like probably like an eight-hour stream if I can get away with it, depending on my wrists, but a longer stream, basically, um, in the attempt to uh, kind of fundraise for a new laptop. Uh, for a working laptop, basically. So when we're in Toronto, uh, I can actually stream and you know edit videos and whatnot. Of course, whenever we just travel in general, it'd be really nice to have. Um, and of course, Rifkin will be joining me on that for at least part of it. You know, however long he wants to stick around, and we're doing StarCraft Two Archon modes, the return of the Rift Grub. What did people call us? I don't even remember. The Base Trade TV. We're Archon. Team Butts. Team Butts. Well, we're Team Butts. We're also we're also Drift compatible. <laughs> yeah, that was the, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, of course, the thing we can't talk about necessarily is the way Zomriel plans to handle it, but she has some stuff she might try and give away during this stream. Stuff she has owned and used and wants to sign and give away to dedicated fans, potentially. Yeah, yeah. So that's the part we're looking into to see if it's okay to do stuff with that, because we don't want to get in trouble with Twitch or nothing. But either way, tomorrow's going to be pretty fun stuff, and I would 10 out of 10 recommend checking out Zomriel's stream for it, and if nothing else, supporting her in the process. Thank but you. Show good games. <laughs> cheer for me, cheer for us. Uh, of course, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. We do, of course, have the Elima League to focus on right now. And again, the round of 16 bracket is so sick. I mean, once more, if you guys are just here in the stream, exclamation mark brackets and chat live with us, we'll bring you to the actual bracket page on Challenge. And just to mention the other the other names here, we already have patrons advancing over Damon Lovato. We got Beyond advancing as well. Ryang and Lucero play the winner of this series. Uh, Keen and Solki, Hyun and Jim Rising. Okay, there's not a lot of Protoss, I'll give you that much, but there's a lot of really talented Zerg and Terran in today's brackets. Mm-hmm. Getting some really great Illumina Leagues lately. Well, this game isn't really, uh, I don't know, reaching a boiling point. It's just macro on Runes of Saras. Uh, of course, vertical positions, maybe not exactly what Armani wanted, but we'll see what he, he does with it. I mean, think about, like, it, it's a completely different map than Arena for both players. You know, usually the bigger map does favor the Zerg, but only if they're going to want to play macro, you know? If they're going to play Roach Hydra, then a shorter map would actually benefit them. Um, so, you know, it's really up to Armani how he plays it. He's going to be super aggressive again. I mean, it, then, you know, the longer rushes is going to actually help him when it comes to reinforcing with Lings. Or is he going to play that macro style and just simply defend uh, against, well, the main attack, but also those drops that are almost sure to come into his main base? Because, uh, you know, the, the spawn positions, Fantasy is going to eventually get to two, two medevacs into his main. I would be honestly surprised if Fantasy didn't get to drops at some point versus Zerg. Because that, that game has gone a really weird direction, if that's the case at all. <laughs> yeah. It just—it's like that. This one point, though. I mean, it's also the one point where the night is from would come into, and that's why fantasy has the dead space covered with marines. Well, with the army coming up, we're starting to see the game take a bit of shape. Unfortunately, production hasn't really been laid out for fantasy, and I'm really just kind of itching on whether he plans to go for that faster third CC. I mean, the drop he's setting up could certainly do some damage, and it might just hinge oh. on that decides whether he wants to throw down three barracks or additional command centers. But the Reaper sadly hasn't scouted anything. So this is a really scary situation for him. He's gonna try and do some damage. Hellions in the natural. He might just push actually with Hellbats. Pardon me, Liberator following this up. So no scouting necessary if you're just gonna go in blind and hard like this. But Armani's got a spine crawl up here. A couple of queens. I guess he anticipated something like this. Yeah, and this Roach Warren timing is almost perfect. Uh, it feels like we've been seeing this, this is like the third or so, fourth time we've seen this, where the Roach Runger just barely not out um, in time. So the Spine Cobble will go down, and maybe a mm. Queen or two. Matter of fact, not being micro through this, though, this gets focused pretty quickly, and I should have lived for a lot longer. Oh, Shouldn't that Queen really should die. Long. That Queen! Yeah, queen finally goes down. It's a little bit messy here for Armani, but also starts falling apart from Fantasy with the Hellbats going down. The squishy, chewy, yummy Marines 
start getting eaten up like vitamins, and Fantasy's attack will fall flat. Now there was a small encounter attack, but looks like that also got cleaned up, so nothing really done. Well, and yeah, the link counter attack was cleaned up. What about this roach counter attack? Yeah, the third CC, it's... I guess I guess he's banking on the Liberator really carrying him. This Liberator did get through to the main, and it did pull the drones off of mining, but only killed one thing and it comes back home. And thank God it's coming back home too, because he needs it at home. Yeah. Set up that Liberator on the well, mineral line. Luckily, the roaches don't have speed, so when I said a roach counter attack, I meant a roach counter attack. It's taking forever. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just like a regular attack now. The counterpart's like gone. It is. It's, it took so long for them to come over here. Rain walks into a Zerg hive and asks, where's the counter? Yeah. Um, even still, even though they took a while to get over here, Ooh, still, like, just, there wasn't much production at all for fantasy, so it still might just work out. Oh, uh, oh my that god, Tank and Liberator go down simultaneously. That bunker's gonna hold for a little bit, but four marines aren't gonna stop bunker. this many Raptors. Yeah, of course, the Curse of Bile takes it down quickly. He might just lose all of the CDs in the, in the natural, but if you could hold in the main base, I mean, maybe you could bring it back. That's a huge maybe, though, because usually the things that bring you back are a third CC, which isn't still, it's not quite done, as well as medevacs to start dropping and harassing them. So he's lost a lot of SCVs through this, but he still has a pretty high count for the third CC behind this. But that Liberator is going to go down. Oh, maybe not one more shot required. Tank is going to hold strong. It looks like Fancy holds the initial attack, but here's the reinforcements. Here's the links. Keep us both just barely in the nick of time. Got to get some SCVs over there to repair that reactor, though. Oh, no. I don't think he expected that to be targeted. Uh, he's going to throw an engineering man oh. to try to wall this off. That's really clever. Really intelligent play out of Fantasy, but he's still fighting a ton of links. And his natural base, it's not just that he's going to lose maybe the command center control, but his depots go down. This could potentially supply block him as time goes on. This is nasty. Does that have to be supply blocked? Another problem. That, well, yeah. If you are, if you should be supply blocked, but you're not supply blocked, that in itself is a problem for sure. Yeah. Now behind this, Armani isn't exactly like a huge economy. Although I, as I say that, like you know, 15 more drones are on the way. Um, but he was only like 50 drones on three base, so um, not bad. Just it's not great. And fantasy. If you saw that, might think like, okay, I have a better chance. But now it's up to that really decent count of uh, 65. He's getting his upgrades. His production starting to go strong too, as he's had three queens constantly injecting. Uh, Fantasy just in a lot of trouble. He didn't have all of those things that I mentioned that it, that really allow you to come back and do a game. I mean, his third CC, I think, just finished into a, an orbital, so finally getting that third mule whenever he can get his natural back. But uh, maybe he was like another tank, and that is bad. That is really bad. That tank should have gone down much sooner, though. The links were just kind of AFK, because back at home, he was, of course, pulling off drones from the mineral line once again. Fantasy doing everything he can to get back into this, but Armani... You know, I guess I guess this is just kind of the recoil of how badly that first game went for him. He really wanted to make this game look a lot better, and certainly doing so. Fantasy had pretty much half the supply of his opponent overall. That's mm -hmm. not good in any regard. Finally gets control of his natural, going to start mining. But, you know, at you know, 8.30, you want to start getting control of your third base as well, which you might be just a little too scared to take. But that's a shadow blood sword, though. You need it, but you can't have it. The upgrades will at least be even when the attack comes, and I do believe Armani's planning on doing an attack soon. This is upgrades finish again. He's got to know that his production has been a lot better. His army supply should also be a lot better. Oh, and of course, I didn't even really notice this, but Stim and Combat Shields did not start. Yeah, all that so... gas went into those tanks and liberators that died early on. Very unfortunate. Uh, kind of scattering the depots right now. I guess this is hopes of using a little bit of Sim City to his advantage later on. It sounds silly to say, but fancy planning ahead. Now the argument could be made: why not just make a wall? But a wall will get bailing bust, whereas this might not. I guess. I don't know. There's there's a lot of ways. Like I look at this and I'm like, cool, anti ultras. But is he really right. hoping to get that far? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if he had a lot of tanks, I guess the turtle could be strong, but he'd also, he'd also need bunkers, yeah, and supply depots surrounding those bunkers, and Armani's already prepared for an attack, his upgrade's finished, he's been producing nothing but roaches for the last minute or so. Yeah, and the Ravagers marching down the middle of the map do not care about low counts of tanks, they certainly don't care about marines that have no stim and combat shields, much less no medevac support. Fantasy is so dead with this push. Armani being surprisingly hesitant to push in here, maybe just thinking like, oh, what if he had like four tanks behind that? But he does have some tanks behind the third base. I mean, I like, I like his, his slow approach, his safe approach. Uh, Armani is actually having some trouble building these tanks, so the medevac picked up might be just kind of scooching him around. Oh, he's a little bit dangerous. 
Well, if he can't kill a tank, just kill the third base. He's yeah. gonna grab him. I think he's realized this now, too. Pretty much maxed out. Marauders coming up, they're not gonna save the day for Raptors. He's gonna shoot the Roaches. And Fantasy, A for effort on the recovery, but he just never had the supply to do anything. And unfortunately, uh, well, it is a slow death. It is a death nonetheless. But the good news for the fans is that this means game three. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, I'm almost positive that Fantasy won't be doing that Hellbats attack again. That's really what the start of the problem was, was the fact that it was uh, you know, countered by those roaches. Armani saw an opportunity and he took it, ran across the map, or walked across the map. I can't blame him though, because you see players like Vian pull off that stunt all the time, and he's like the best Terran right now, seriously, like by far, so a uh, little unfortunate that didn't go well for him.